So how do we use shaping functions to draw things on screen? How do we use them to manipulate color and geometry? Well, a shaping function doesn't actually exist. There's no such thing as a shaping function. Shaping is not a type of function. What we have are simply functions. The functions you learned in high school. Linear, quadratic, third degree, exponential, logarithmic, and some of these guys are used more than others. We have the, uh, the trigs, the sine, cosine, tan, and you could throw the, the rational guy in there as well. We use these functions to shape how color and geometry get manipulated on screen. OpenGL didn't create these functions though. These functions have been around since math was a thing. So what is so important about these basic functions? Well, what's so important about a triangle in graphics rendering? Well, from a triangle you can get a square. From a square you can get a cube. From a square you can also represent a circle. And so these functions are the basic building blocks of drawing patterns of color, and geometry, and even movement on screen. From these functions, you create more complex patterns. Quick refresher before we start. How does a mathematical function work? Well, we have an f of x. We feed an independent variable x into the function. The function goes to work on it and it spits out some sort of output. We call that y. Let's get to it. Now, I need to stress before we get into the, uh, the meat of this video. If you're having trouble understanding this video in the next few, it's highly likely it's not the GLSL that's the problem. It's your knowledge of these basic functions and how to manipulate them. What am I talking about? Well, this is Desmos.com. It's an online graphing calculator. We have the functions on the left and they get plotted on the right. Desmos uses probably JavaScript with some libraries to do this. The point of going to Desmos.com is not to learn the language that Desmos is using to plot the graphs. The point of going to this site is just to see your graphs visualized. And so for this video and the next few videos, the point is not the GLSL code per se. It's important, but it's not the point. We're trying to zoom out. We're trying to go meta. We're trying to understand on a conceptual level, how are we using functions to quote unquote shape color and geometry? How should we think about how a function is shaping things on our campus? Well, let's break it up. How does a function shape color? Well, we use the function to weight our color variables. When you describe a color, you use RGB. You use the fact that a function produces a certain physical pattern, up and down, up and down, steady, then up, up, then steady, then up, to help us modify how our RGB colors get displayed on the screen. Let's say we have a red canvas. It's starting at a value of 1. And we want less red at the start, and we want more red towards the end. Well, we look for a function that models this behavior of starting low and then ending high, something like this, a linear function. Now, what if we wanted the opposite? We wanted more red at the start and then less at the end. Well, we could take that same linear function and just flip it on the y-axis, where we could start high and then end low, something like this. And finally, what if we want less red in the beginning, less in the mid, and then more red at the end? Well, we take some sort of base function and modify it, or we can just take the base function, like this one here, this third degree, that starts low, continues to be low in the mid, and then it shoots up at the end like that. And so we use shaping functions to apply weights to a color value. This is how a shaping function shapes color. How does a function shape geometry? Well, we can use the function to warp lines. So our canvas represents a Cartesian plane. A Cartesian plane is just broken up into XY pairings. So we map that Cartesian plane onto our canvas. We're essentially working with a plane, not just some blank square. And so it's a lot easier to understand this than the color one because shaping uh, lines on screen is a lot more intuitive. All I'm doing here is I'm setting up some functions and we'll add them and we'll see what we get. The first function is a constant. The second is the linear. That's the diagonal one. The third one is the sinusoidal. I'm using sine. That's the wave. And the fourth one is just a modified exponential function. I made it track down. Usually it tracks upwards. So now I'm going to add the linear and the sine wave and you'll see what we get. Predictably, we get this line that's also now wavy, but it's also tracking from bottom left to top right instead of the original sine wave, which was just the mid left to the mid right. Now to the sine wave, this modified sine and linear wave, I'm just going to add the exponential, the one that dropped off to the right real quick, and you get the exact behavior you'd expect, this right here. Now let's do this exact same thing just in OpenGL. We'll start with the constant line, we'll move on to the linear, we add the sign and then we add the exponential at track down and we get the exact same behavior. So this is how we use shaping functions to manipulate lines or shape lines on screen. And if we can shape lines on screen, 
then we can shape geometry on screen, shapes on screen, like this. And so that's going to be it. I left some reading material down in the description below, just Khan Academy Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 functions if you want to refresh. Other than that, leave a like, a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, comments down below, and I will see you guys in the next one.